And joining me now is David Hawkins. He's the editor of the Fulcrum here in Washington, D.C. And David, your perspective right now is uh, incredibly helpful because <laughs> uh, it wasn't too long ago that you covered a different impeachment inquiry, and that was of Bill Clinton. What are some of the big differences between what happened then and what's happening now? Right. My, the mind uh, definitely can conjure it all up. I thought it was going to be the one time in my life I'd be covering impeachment. It was 21 years ago, but the memories are pretty clear. Uh, one thing is different. The first thing that's different uh, is that the Clinton impeachment was quite narrowly focused, uh, and we don't yet know whether the Trump impeachment will be. But the Clinton impeachment, of course, everybody remembers, narrowly focused on Bill Clinton's sexual relationship with a former White House intern, Monica Lewinsky, and what he had done to cover that up. And it was all about the Judiciary Committee. Uh, and the Judiciary Committee proceeded with that inquiry, importantly and different from now, after a vote by the entire House to authorize that inquiry. Actually, as a really interesting, I think, and an important note, uh, back then in 1998, 31 House Democrats, members of the President Clinton's own party, voted for that inquiry. Uh, it's, it was an indic they were mostly Southerners, they were mostly fiscal conservatives, they were mostly people with their own election troubles, but they back joined the Republicans to back this. And then it took 10 weeks to get it on the House floor. Four articles of impeachment, two were adopted, two were rejected, and then a trial in the Senate that lasted six weeks with the outcome as foreordained as what it looks like now, which is the president was acquitted. Yeah, and when you think about that timeline and you hear about how Democrats are talking about moving quickly, about how aware they are of both the political calendar and how often they're actually in D.C. to get some of this done, uh, do you think it's uh, reasonable for them to have this vote before Thanksgiving and move as judiciously as they say they want to? Yeah, ex expeditiously and judiciously is what yes. they say. Um, well, I think the first thing that Mrs. Pelosi needs to get past is that there are several chairmen, uh, Richie Neal of Ways and Means, Maxine Waters of the Financial Services Committee, Jerry Nadler of the Judiciary Committee, who still have some ideas about things that they think the president might ought to be impeached for. And Mrs. Pelosi is going to have to, if she wants to get this done expeditiously, she's going to kind of have to tell them to step aside if they're going to focus entirely on Ukraine. That's going to mean Adam Schiff on, on the Intelligence Committee, maybe a little bit less on the Foreign Affairs Committee and the Government Affairs Committee. But still, uh, extremely tight timetable. I think getting it done uh, and getting it to a trial in the Senate, which, by the way, we should say the Constitution doesn't say there has to be a trial. Mitch McConnell, in theory, could never hold a trial, although he has said a few weeks ago that he would hold a trial. You never know whether he's going to, what they're saying, pull a Merrick Garland and say, we're not going to have a trial. Well, David, thank you so much for that perspective, both historical and forward-looking, so we really appreciate that. For more stories like these, you can check out The Fulcrum at thefulcrum.us.